Well, I think we'll be for running back. You know, it never, never helps to lose a, uh, lose a front line player. I'm looking at him sort of like Jake Heaps. You know, like practice him now because this is when he's going to practice because those first three games, and you look down at the show team, we're going to have the best show team running back in the country over there because he's going to be over there running show team. One of the emphasis coaches is our stamina. You have to be able to, as a receiver, you have to be able to run that third down, third down route in the fourth quarter when it counts, when it's third and eight, like you did in the first quarter when it was third and eight. One of the things I think that we as a team, I think, have definitely been lacking, okay, from the beginning of spring and have gotten better at it, is stamina. You got to be coming out of your route. You got to be, um, you got to be able to count on you. And we're still working in that area, um, obviously as a receiver group. You know, we're, we're green and growing um, every day. Well, I'd say of all the positions on the team, the team, that there, the position there's been the most competition at has been a wide receiver position. Uh, certainly, you don't know uh, what to expect um, when you come into a situation new. Um, but I'm certainly very pleased that we have the numbers and the depth and the quality and it, and it makes it a very competitive position right now. And um, that's how you get good. You build your depth from your bottom up. And that's how you get a good position group. Um, I've been very happy with the progress that receivers have made, great depth of the position. Um, and, you know, what, what, happen, what happens when you've got great depth at a position is you know, it brings the best out of everybody because the guys that were quote unquote starters maybe a year ago are now being pushed by guys that realize that if they play well enough, you know, they're going to get on the field as well. So um, it, it really is a positive situation and um, just overall very happy with that depth. You know, I'm really, tr really trying to get them to be a complete group. Okay. And a complete group, all right, is physical blocks, releases. A complete group um, makes it difficult catches. Complete group runs with the ball after he catches it, makes yards after catch. And from the first part of spring to the 15th practice, we want to show improvement. I think that's the best thing anybody can say about a football coach is your group improved. I kind of realized what um, Coach Ionello was looking for in uh, blocking and stuff. Well, I always thought the best coaching of receivers comes when the quarterback is communicating with the wide receiver. Guys like Kale, uh, Kale Pick, um, Damon Patterson. Um, I mean, those guys, you know, if they're, they're competing, making plays, but it, it's not to say that anybody else isn't, you know. I mean, they, every day, I mean, we're looking at a receiver and saying, hey, you know, his stock's rising and stuff. I think Kale Pick's playing physical. Um, I think Chris Omiji, uh, Justin McKay. We're doing some things where, where DJ and, and um, Damon have stepped up and been physical. Um, I've been, um, you know, been blocking a lot of linebackers, occasionally winning and blocking some DNs and even winning those battles and springing some runs. So um, in the past, that's something I wouldn't have been able to do. Um, some, a couple of years ago, it was just hard for me to you know, stand on some of the bigger corners, letting alone the safety. But now I'm in the inside, in the trenches with DN and DNs and linebackers and holding my own and um, letting plays get started and really um, get down the field. I think the biggest thing that um, – is underlooked in college football is receiver blocking. I mean, a lot of people just think that receivers run around out there and don't block, which is, I mean, receiver blocking is huge for the running game once the running back gets past that first level of linebackers. And I mean, if the receivers don't have their guys blocked, then he's not going to go to the house or score. I mean, it's huge for receivers to get on their man and start blocking downfield so they can take a 40-yard gain into a touchdown. Once you go against you know, some linebackers, DNs, you get out there with a corner that's your size, now you feel like you can control them and do what you want with them. You know, this, this team is so much better than 2-10 and ten or, you know, the, the, the negatives that are surrounding the team. And, you know, I think guys have definitely moved past that, that culture. Um, you know, guys are competing. They understand that every day in spring is, is a tryout, you know, and, and no one's set in stone. And, um, you know, the competition, I think, is the most exciting thing seen out there every day, that day in and day out, guys are competing. For a guy to come in to not really know these guys, these guys have been together for a long time, and become one of the boys that quickly, you know, that's an unusual quality to be able to have as a person.
That's the biggest thing. He came in here like he was like another one of the guys there. If you was just to come in here and you didn't know he transferred, you you would never know if you just seen us, how we communicate with him, how he communicates and relates to everybody else. From day one, he's just been comfortable. And um, like I said, when he came here from day one, he um, showed us what type of leadership he's going to have. He talked with the receivers, talked with the running backs, was spreading his knowledge of the offense with everybody. And he never, like, you know, just kind of shy, was shy or in the back. He's a quarterback. You got to be in the front. You know, you got to assert yourself. And I think that's what he really did when he got here. And everybody just, you know, fell in line with him. And you're the offense. He comes into the huddle. He has a presence. He's 6'4", 235. He's a linebacker out there, DN, playing quarterback. Now, Jake is the next closest thing, but we all know that Jake's not eligible to play this year. That's no, that's no big secret. Okay, so Michael's been getting more and more as the time goes up, as the time's going on. And Blake's got some too, but Michael's been you know, getting more and more, you know, because you have to start getting somebody ready to be number two. Okay, and then you got Turner coming in to see what he does when he, when he joins the mix. But I mean, just watching his presence in the huddle and, you know, you don't have to worry about the offensive line identifying the front because he identifies the front. You don't have to worry about delay game penalties. You don't have to worry about check with me. You don't have to worry about him, you know, potentially getting you out of a bad play. I mean, these are things that are learned over time. You know, so, you know, we cheated. You know, we got a good head start. Okay, but, you know, it really helps. It really helps, especially first year when you're, when you're installing everything for the first time. And, you know, people talk about pressure all the time, and, and pressure doesn't have to be a negative thing now. I mean, yeah. Pressure's a, a huge positive, and, and that's really the way that I view it. And, um, you know, I think I play my best, uh, in, you know, when the pressure's at its highest. And um, great competitors love playing, it, you know, when, when things are, you know, at their worst or your back's against the wall or, you know, it's, it's a high-pressure situation. And um, like you said, you really just got to kind of relish it. Yeah.